Cal leads the all-time series. They've won eight of the last ten. And this is the first time that Tony Dykes has been part of this matchup. This is football weather here in the Bay Area. Look at the Bay Bridge. What a lovely new bridge that is. 46 degrees, feels even colder, but Hutch, I know you like this. This is what you're used to. Man, this is this is a little Big Ten weather. I, I, I dig this. I'm not sure the fans are, are really up for it. They're bundled up a little bit more than you'd think for 46 degrees, but there is a pretty good breeze. I, I'll give them that. Gump Hayes and Tim White are back deep, awaiting a kick for Matt Anderson. The holiday weekend continues. Football late night here in Berkeley. And we're underway. This will go into the end zone for a touchback. Time for three things you had to know when ASU has the ball. Well, first they want to set up the deep pass with the run. Those deep passes Mike Norvell likes to call only work when safeties are up to stop the run. Number two, you want to limit turnovers. You don't want to give Goff and his receivers a short field. And for Cal on defense, they must stop the run on early downs. They haven't been great against the run this season, but they need to find, force ASU to be one-dimensional. Mike Krukovici in the shotgun, the quarterback. He's got Demario Richard in the backfield with him. On first down, the handoff is to Richard up the middle. And Richard gets up to the 32-yard line, picks up eight. Mike Berkovici, the senior from Calabasas, California. 3,000 yards this year. Fifth ASU quarterback to do that. And off again to Richard. And Richard trying to get the first down, does not, comes up a yard shot. Kyle Kendrick there, excuse me, Kyle Cragen there with the tackle. Arizona State having two backs last week over 100 yards. Third and one, up the middle again, forward progress. I believe they're gonna give it to him. And they will, a first down. You talk about Arizona State liking to go deep, especially when they when they get near that midfield. But uh, like Mike Norvell said on the phone the other day, it, we, you know, it all starts with the run. We've gotta be balanced, we can't be one dimensional, and those deep shots come when you, when you run the ball effectively. A keep by Berkovici. And Berkovici makes a move and dives forward. And it looks like he's going to come up just shy. Picks up nine. Second down and one. So what was that third key? Stop the run? Stop the run. And so far, they're not, they're not doing a good job of it. And here, here's why I said you come up to midfield, and they like to take shots. Look for a deep pass soon. Looks like a false start. Our first flag of the game. And it is a false start here against Arizona State. Land false Clark, start. our official. Offense number 73. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That's a rarity for this Arizona State team, one of the one of the least penalized teams in the country. They probably just jinx, jinxed them, but there's one stat. You know, they've had one accepted holding call all year. No, now you jinxed yeah, them. Yeah, you're right, but I had to, yeah, I was, I was getting you out of it. <laughs> Second down and six. Berkovici, his first pass of the game, and that is complete. To the tight end, Cody Cole, and Cole has the first down up to the 48, tackled by Hardy Nickerson. Nothing special here. Berkovici, good protection by the offensive line, little leak late, but good way to start the, start the game with a nice completion. DJ Foster moves into the backfield with Demario Richard now. And they'll hand off to Foster. And D.J. Foster, a guy who is used to playing in the backfield, picks up four, moved to wide receiver this year, and you'll see him in the backfield for ASU. Yeah, he's a local kid from Scottsdale, Arizona, 1,000-yard rusher last year, really good running back, and unselfishly moved to receiver this year. Second down and six. Berkovici the pass, taking the shot down the field, and it is complete. Devin Lucien makes the grab and a nice throw by Berkovici back shoulder for 30 yards. Well, Devin Lucien is their leading receiver. And you see a golf like pass there on a Berkovici back shoulder throw, only where his re receiver could get it. Handoff up the middle, Richard again. 
Six yards on first down, so a good opening drive here for ASU. Coming into this game, six and five, there is a player down. And that player down is number 92, Marcus Manley for Cal. The 6'3", 300-pound junior out of Los Angeles. That's not a good sign for Cal. I, I know they're a little thin up front on the defensive line to begin with. Tony McCary, uh, a little banged up. Um, so they're, they're, that's not a good sign for Cal. We hope he's okay, but they're already... The trainers are out to look at Manley. Opening drive of the game, ASU with the ball inside the 15. Marcus Manley was able to walk off the fields with some help, and now he's being looked at on the sideline. Second down here, and five for Arizona State from the 13 of Cal. Berkovici, a handoff to Richard, and Richard gets up to the 10, picks up three. Third and two coming up. Arizona State continuing to pound the middle of their interior line. On this, on this opening drive. And so far, like we talked about, it's opened up a couple of those passes on the, on the outside. Third and two. Handoff again to Richard. And Richard, real close, that first down marker. Easy to be offensive coordinator when you're in second and one and third and one all day. And of course, this brings up a fourth, but they did a good job on this drive so far converting easy uh, down distances. Well, fourth and one, and they're going to go for it. A whistle before a, f a timeout taken by Cal. Prior to the snap, timeout, California. They're first of the half. So Cal maybe saw It'll something on the field delay. they didn't like coming up on that fourth and one. And a timeout called by Sonny Dykes and the sideline. This Arizona State team lost that season opener against Texas A&M. And this team had championship aspirations. Then in the Pac-12, they lose five of six to start conference play. And the season was going away and then all of a sudden here they are they recover they get the win last week against Arizona looking to make it three in a row they're bowl eligible six and five and Todd Graham's crew they know they're going bowling the question is where and now they're trying to get a victory to close out this regular season Berkovici under center empty backfield fourth and one Berkovici right up the middle and with the push Looking at the officials running in, it looks like he has it. That's just a good surge by the offensive line up front, and I think you're right. I think they're going to give it to him. It is a first down. And you see, you see some blue jerseys moving backwards, and that's what you want to see as an offensive line in that situation. First and goal from the eight. Cole in motion. Richard takes it, and he rolls over the five-yard line to get three. Second and goal from the five here for ASU. Luke Rubenzer, the safety, coming up and making that stop. And I know they're close to the end zone here, so you see the safeties creeping up. But that's what happens when you have success running the ball early. I mean, when, when they're getting past the first and second level, those safeties start creeping up, and that's what en ends up opening up the back end for them deep passes later in the game. On second and goal, the handoff again up the middle is, which is Richard. Two yards, they're just, it's like that, you know, killing me softly type drive. Just a couple of yards, chipping away, chipping away. Right, I joked about the weather being Big Ten, like I didn't know the play was going to be <laughs> like it. Here we're out in Pac-12 country where they invented the pass basically and, and, and you're seeing three three yards in a cloud of dust so you're saying I shouldn't bring up the Ohio State Michigan game uh, you want to get you wanna, I'll choke you with your uh, <laughs> with your cord there third and goal Berkovici rolling out to the right throws and it's incomplete tipped Cody Cole was the intended receiver Jalen Jefferson 
was on the coverage and now fourth and goal in the field goal unit coming on. Yeah, Jalen Jefferson wasn't fooled there. You see all the action going away. Berkovici rolling out, but the defense did a good job of covering that. He got away with a little hold there, but hey, the, rest of, the ref doesn't see it. It didn't happen. A 21-yard field goal attempt for Zane Gonzalez. And the kick is good. So three points for Arizona State, but a big time stop for Cal. And now Cal will get the kickoff and we'll see this guy for the first time. Jared Goff as Cal trails 3-0. College football on FS1 is presented by Gay Jewelers. It is a 3-0 lead for Arizona State. An atypical scoring drive for the Sun Devils. 15 plays, took almost five and a half minutes. 12, 12 rushes, three passes on that drive. Yeah, Mike Norvell, the offensive coordinator, this year, 71% of their drives have come, scoring drives have come under uh, three minutes. So that's an eternity for ASU offense. Noah on the return. He breaks a couple of tackles and takes it out to the 30-yard line. Kanavai Noah with a good return. Time for a Lowe's game break. Let's go to Jenny Taft. Thanks, Justin. A big matchup over on Fox between number six, Notre Dame, and number nine, Stanford. Kevin Hogan to Austin Hooper. That's Hogan's fourth touchdown today. Stanford leads 35-29 in the fourth quarter, and the Irish need this one to keep their playoff hopes alive. Justin, Steve, back to you. All right, thanks, Jenny. And the first pass of the game for golf is incomplete, broken up by Layu Mwakiola. Jared Goff, much talked about this year among draft gurus, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. His career passing yards, he's been over 3,000 yards in each of his first three seasons. Second down and 10. The pass is complete, Trevor Davis. Davis down the near sideline, gets tackled at the 36-yard line. Solomon Means brings him down, a pickup of 34. Well, we talked about everybody knows how, how good Goff is, but with Arizona pressure, and you leave it one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and Davis makes him pay. Nice throw and catch to open the game. You talked about the chess match. Empty backfield here for Goff. Rolling out to his right, comes back. Again, it's Davis. And Davis will get up to the 32. Well, we talked to... Coach Graham from Arizona State, he said one of the best things that Goff does is look away. The, the wide receiver screams is the best thing they do, and he has the ability to look away the defense, look away the guy he's throwing the ball to, get the defense flowing the opposite way, and get him the ball. You saw it right there. Second down and six here for Cal. Trey Watson in the backfield. Goff with some time over the middle, deflected. Juggled by Raymond Hudson. Well, you couldn't ask for better protection up front for Goff. ASU was coming as they usually do. And Goff had time to step up in the pocket and throw the ball. And those are one of those one of those plays you wish you had back. So close. They'll have to try it again. Third and six. Again, going empty. ASU showing blitz. Goff over the middle. Completes the pass to Darius Powell. The first down, 11 yards. Goff standing in there, taking a little bit of a hit. Not much, but you see him. It didn't affect him. He stood in there, stood his ground, stepped into the throw, and made the completion. Longino with the hit on Goff, first and 10. Goff, the rollout to his right, throws. A nice catch 
made by Steven Anderson. And a flag down. 10 yard pickup, but let's wait to see what this flag is. Pass interference. Offense number three. A 15 yard penalty. Replay, third down. First down. Maurice Harris at the top of your screen there is going to run a little pick. And that's, that's becoming more prevalent in some of these unique passing and more complex passing situations in, in both the NFL and, and college ball. You see that guy coming, he's just going to try to wing him a little bit, but any contact outside of one yard on a pass that's thrown beyond the line of scrimmage is uh, offensive pass interference. So now you back it up 15 yards, first and 25. And the first handoff to Trey Watson, and Watson trying to cut back. Good job containing on the outside by Quishy Brown. And a two-yard run for Trey Watson. One of the things Arizona, Arizona State does well is stop the run. And like you mentioned, Cal, their first run of the night, first handoff, it's, they're going to have to try to sprinkle it in there and, and get positive yards out of it. Second down and 23. Switching the place. And now, looks like a timeout. Sideline warning, Arizona State. Their first warning of the game. The cheer from the fans here at California Memorial Stadium. The play clock was all the way down to four when that happened. Sometimes coaches get a little bit lost out there. They, they, they lose their minds, and before you know it, they're standing on the numbers. They got, they got a, usually a get-back coach will get them out of there. Still second and 23. Goff having a dance around in the pocket. Just trying to get rid of it, and he does. Escapes the sack. Anytime you're second and 23, I don't think there's a, you know, a play caller in America that has a play for that. But that's exactly where Arizona State wants you. They want to they want to limit the yardage on first down and get you, you know, that's why they, they lead the, the Pac-12 in tackles for losses. They, they want to get you in an unmanageable second and third down. And third and 23 is, is not where you want to be all day long, all night long. Do they go for it all or do they try to get back in the field goal range? Goff over the middle, completes the pass to Anderson, and Anderson gets up to the 23-yard line, gets 12 back. And with that play, they do get back in the field goal range. That was one of the one of the things that Coach Dykes was criticized last week against Stanford for was going being a little too conservative and going for field goals, but I think in this situation it warrants it. Matt Anderson to try to tie this one up with a 39-yarder. And Anderson's kick is perfect. So the teams exchange some field goals on their opening drives of this ball game. We already saw Mike Berkovici once. Aired it out a couple of times. His ASU Sun Devils will get the ball after this. That's nothing compared to what was going on at the Hutchinson House on Thanksgiving. But it is 3-3 here in Berkeley. ASU and Cal. Nine plays, 47 yards. The 39-yard field goal by Matt Anderson. And he will now kick off. Tim White is back deep. White will let it go again. And ASU will start at the 25. Well be a big test for Iowa knock on them is the West Division they, they, they really played a, an op opponent worthy of getting them in there but 12 and 0 is 12 and 0 and they'll they'll see this week against Michigan State that's a good football team DJ Foster goes in motion on first down the handoff to Demario Richard and Richard will pick up a few yards spun around by Kyle Cragen Kyle Cragen his dad, Greg, three-time All-Pro in 13 NFL seasons. 
couple guys. Linebacker Hardy Nickerson, dad, longtime Tampa Bay Buck, current Buck linebacker coach. Richard goes in motion. Berkovici over the middle. DJ Foster with a catch in the first down up to the 37. DJ Foster is really an interesting guy. As you had mentioned before, he moved to wide receiver. He can do it both on the ground, in the air. The last two years, 60 plus receptions out of the backfield. The handoff up the middle to Richard, and he gets three yards to the 40, second down and seven. Well, he's caught a pass in 51 consecutive games, which now is 52. 52, you're right, <laughs> which is, I, I think 51 was a Pac 12 record. I think it was a conference record. He leads the nation in that, that stat there. But a guy that obviously, whether it be out of the backfield or on, on the outside, they want to get him the ball. Kalen Balage is now in for the first time in the backfield. On second and seven, the toss to him. Balage tries to cut it back and does. A nice move by the sophomore out of Colorado. Picks up six, third and short. Good job by Balage finding something there. There wasn't really any holes, but he had a good job of putting his foot in the ground and cutting up against the seam and getting a couple out of it. A nice game last week, over 100 yards against Arizona. Lowers that shoulder on third and one, and he's got himself the first down up to the 49, gets three. Hardy Nickerson finally able to push him backwards, and that's not good. You see Balage now walking off, holding the hand. That's not moving that arm at all, and you don't like to see that from anybody. Mario Richard comes back in first and 10 from the 49. Toss to Richard. Richard a little hop, skip, and a jump inside there. And he'll get four, set up second down and six. Well, again, here they are past midfield. And we talked about how they like to throw the ball deep, especially off of play action. And the way they're running the ball so far tonight, they're going to have it. They're going to have it deep here. Those safeties can't help but cheat up when, when you're running the ball four or five yards a pop. Already 58 yards on the ground for Arizona State and a false start. Raymond Epps, the tight end, he was trying to get a head start. False start. Offense number 80. Five yard penalty. Second down. I think he was the guy they were <laughs> planning on going deep to on that play, like I called. He just got, <laughs> got a little excited. They're running the play for me. They're running the play for me. If I was playing tight end, I'd have to get a head start, too, because I don't think I'd beat too many people down the field. Second down and 11 here. Justin Kutcher, Steve Huxton with you here on FS1. ASU against Cal. Berkovici taking the shot down the field, throws, and it's incomplete. Devin Lucien could not haul it in. Oh, another great throw by Berkovici on the outside to Lucien, although this time he, he doesn't come up with it. Last time was about the same spot, was a back shoulder, beautiful throw, and this one he led him perf perfectly, and see his reaction there. He knew they let one go, but I'll tell you what, this, you know, this, this offensive game plan is working as, just like Mike uh, Norvell, the offensive coordinator, planned it so far. Third and 11. Berkovici. With time. Berkovici extending the play, throws down the sideline, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was the running back to Mario Richard. Good pass protection by the offensive line of Arizona State. So far in this game, both O lines have kept their quarterbacks pretty clean. Nothing to do down the field, nowhere to go, trying to buy some time with his legs and Smartly throws it out of bounds, but good job up front by the guys. So Matt Hawk on to punt. You see his numbers, good numbers this year. Conovai Noah is back to return, standing at his own 10. Good high punt, fair catch. And it's recovered by Marcus Ball. Early on the field, as the kick was muffed by the receivers, recovered by the kickers. First down, Arizona State. 
Well, Todd Graham told me turnovers are going to be key. I think he was thinking more on his on his defensive side, either interceptions or fumbles, but he'll take this. Turnover in special teams is a is a huge momentum changer. And I don't think the momentum was all in ASU's corner to begin with, but that just sealed it, and here they are in a easy scoring position at the uh, plus 10. Conavai Noah, the freshman out of Honolulu, gives it back to ASU. On first down, the handoff to Richard. And Richard will get up to the eight, gets two. Second and goal from the eight. Jalen Jefferson with the tackle. ASU continuing to run it right up the middle. I would look for some sort of play action off that. Got an offset back here, but Berkovici can move outside the pocket. I wouldn't be surprised if they roll out a little bit. Throws to the end zone, incomplete. Well, getting a yard on first down and incompletion on second. Now you. You're left with a, a long third down try to get in the end zone. Jalen Harvey was the intended receiver, so now third and goal. And this is a big, big play right now for the Cal defense. Can they help out their teammate Noah and just maybe give up three? Berkovici steps up over the middle. Touchdown. Devin Lucian. Well, Fifth touchdown of the year for Lucien. It all starts up front. Good protection, but good throw and catch, but even a better run after the catch. See Lucien there, a little bit of a, a pinball, bounces off a couple guys, but always moving forward. Good job getting in. ASU thinking maybe go for two, but I don't think they're ever really thinking that. Zane Gonzalez going to come on for the extra point. The extra point is good. Sonny Dykes trying to cheer on his guys. The mump punt led to a celebration here for Arizona State. They took advantage, points off turnovers. Lead now 10-3. Ten three AS, ASU leading Cal and you ever see the movie Old School? We're going streaking. That's basically the story for Cal this year. They went five straight to open the season and then they lose their next four. They become bowl eligible for the first time though since 2011 with a victory over Oregon State. And here they are at six and five, three and five in conference play and they trail ASU by seven. Those, a couple of those losses were, were tough losses. They were close, but like you said, you start off white hot, you slip, momentum gets away from you. Zane Gonzalez to kick off. Kind of by Noah, who dropped that punt, the muff punt. Going to return it for about a yard deep. And Noah will get out to the 20-yard line. Hutch, three things you have to know when Cal has the ball. Well, first, the O-line must protect the quarterback. So far, so good. ASU lives and dies by pressure and sacks. Number two, must make a play after the catch. When they blitz, they leave guys one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. They got to make a play after the catch, make them pay for it. And ASU, tackling is key. When they do make that catch, don't break a tackle and let them streak down the field. You got to be able to stop them. And folks, full disclosure, he said all that before the first series. We didn't, we didn't change things up. On first down, the handoff to Trey Watson. And Watson keeps it going, will get nine yards. Yeah, that's a good run. That's a good run for Cal to open up this, this possession with it because, you know, we knew Jared Goff's their quarterback. We knew they have talented receivers and they like to throw the ball. Their first drive, seven pass, one run. They're going to have to be a little bit more balanced than they want. And even though Arizona State's great at stopping the run, they have to mix it in there. Second down and one. Goff swings it out, completes the pass. 
to Maurice Harris. And Harris has the first down up to the 38. Remember, it was Harris who got called for that offensive pass interference and kind of stopped that drive before for Cal. Right, well, there you see him make a, what I was talking about in the three things. He made the catch, made the first guy miss, and ended up another five or six yards. So they're going to continue to try to do that down the field. Watson runs right into a couple of white jerseys, going to lose a yard. Tayshawn Smallwood was there with Salamo Fiso. Double, double. Yeah, you see Smallwood there. He uh, big guy, not so small. <laughs> but uh, you know that's what they that's what they do. Todd Graham will tell you we we want to pressure the quarterback on passing downs. We want to stop them behind the line of scrimmage. We want tackles for losses because they believe when you get them in a situation where you're second and long, third and long, they're going to win. Kalfani Muhammad in the backfield for the first time goes out in motion. Goff, good protection. Over the middle, throws, and that one is caught by Bryce Treggs. Beautiful protection by the line. He had a great pocket and delivered a strike. Well, you're going to see why NFL scouts love this quarterback. You're going to see him. Great protection up front. He's going to scan, go through his progressions, and find the open receiver. On first down, the handoff to Muhammad. Muhammad, a good run after the initial contact. And that will be the final play of this first quarter. Five yards on first down for Kalfani Muhammad. Well, so far, we've had three possessions, three scores, and here's Cal marching down as they trail by seven. 10-3 from Berkeley, Arizona on top of Cal. This Cal team under Sonny Dykes improved every year offensively. That's what they knew, or that's what they were hoping when they signed him. Took over for Jeff Tedford. Second down and five, first play of the second quarter here for Cal. Play action, golf. That is incomplete. Quishy Brown came down with it out of bounds. Kenny Lawler was the intended receiver. So third and five coming up. We're back to that, that last big play that got him down the field a little bit. You, so to open the game, they've done a couple empty sets where there's no backs in the backfield. Kind of like what you're going to see here. But normally they, they'd move Goff. I think they were a little leery of, of the protection. But that time the O-line did good jobs standing there, made him give him a good pocket to throw the ball and see if they can do it again here. Third and five, empty backfield, pressure coming. Golf gets rid of it, incomplete. No, no flag, the antenna receiver, Darius Powell. And with the ball right now at the 29-yard line. Decision time for Sonny Dykes. His team down by seven. And it looks like he's going to be going for it. And that's what Arizona State wants. They're going to bring more guys than you can block and make, make you throw the ball quick, and hopefully there's a defender there to stop him before he gets to the line of game. Trey Watson in on fourth and five. Play clock down to two. Goff taking the shot to the end zone, and he overthrows incomplete Bryce Treggs. So a turnover on downs. Here for Cal, and that was a very aggressive play call for the Golden Bears. Arizona State will take over. Sonny Dykes and the Bears. Oh, not what they're hoping for. Down by seven. <laughs> Here's Arizona State taking over at their own 29. Berkovici will keep it and dive. Maybe gets a yard. Hardy Nickerson brings him down. And we talked about the decision for Sonny Dykes to go for it on that fourth down. And I talked about it a little bit earlier. He was criticized last week about being too conservative against Stanford. Not the case tonight. Trying to make a statement, but fortunately it didn't work in their favor. Second down and nine. Richard again. This time he gets it up the middle. He'll get four yards third and five coming up 
you start to get the sense that even though Arizona State's getting up to the line and running plays quick, the, the style of play they're doing tonight is, they're, you know, it's a little Big ten -ish. We joked about it earlier. I, I think they're trying to keep the ball out of Jared Goff's hands and for, for good reason, yeah. right? But you don't see them play this slow as far as their play calling and their plays that are designed to take time. Third and five, Berkovici. Nice catch in a move by the running back, Richard. And he gets the first down nine yards. He made a man miss, and that move allowed him to get the first down. And Arizona State's kind of taking the three things that I said for Cal, and they're using them, but it's working, so. It's nice when that's your average distance to go on third down. Yeah. Well, I could be an offense coordinator if you're going to give me 32, <laughs> 33 all day. The flag, false start. I think it's going to be the tight end. False start. Offense number 83. Five yard penalty. Still first down. It is Cody Cole. We've seen enough film of offensive line to know who jumped. You get that. You get that. You get the eye for it. You know. What is that feeling when you are the guy when oh. you know you're the guilty one? Yeah. You know what? It's 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 like, why did I jump? I know what the snap count is. Why did I jump? But, it's always great when you're not the guy that did it either. Berkovich throws towards the sideline, completes the pass to Lucien. Well, it, you know, we joke about it, but that's the one thing that can screw up your game plan. You know, when you're when you're running the ball for three, four yards a pop, and you're and you're mixing in some intermediate passes, and you're moving the chains methodically, and then you get a first and 15. That kind of screws up your rhythm. Berkovich over the middle. Wow. With a late turn and look, and the ball was there, and he's hobbling off the field now. Well, that's one way to make up for the penalty. Obviously, he did a good job getting off the field. They want to kind of keep this tempo up, and substitution comes in. We'll see. It looks like a leg injury. He's hobbling off. Good catch. 26-yard completion. Berkovici up top. Lucien brings it down. Down at the seven yard line, a 24 yard completion. Lucien had nine catches, 190 and a touchdown last week. Off to a good start on this one. Yep. It's, they're, so far, these two are making a pretty good combo tonight. Richard takes the handoff right up the middle, gets two. Seems like last week against Arizona, everything that, that they've wanted to do offensively kind of just clicked. You know, they went down the field. It was kind of a bomb fest, and they were they were connecting on a lot of them. I mean, more than you'd think they were. They were they were airing it out, and that's the that's the uh, the combination. You hit it nine catches for 190 last week, and they're on well on their way to doing it again. Manny Wilkins is in that quarterback. Wilkins running the option, keeps it, and he just runs right into Mustafa Jaleel. <laughs> Third and goal coming up. Berkovici comes back in. And I know we're going to have a game break in a minute, but guess what? Stanford kicked the last second field goal to beat Notre Dame. Of course, all the Cal fans are going, oh, Stanford. But they're keeping the Pac-12 championship or the uh, playoff uh, team contender alive. The hopes for it anyway. Berkovici on third and goal throws. Touchdown, Lucian. Who else? See Lucian lined up at the top. Good comeback route. And pretty good coverage. There's nothing much you can do defensively more than that. He was on him, but good route, good throw. Threw the ball where only his guy could get it. Second touchdown of the game for Lucian. Already 71 catches on 71 yards on five catches. And the extra point for Gonzalez is good. Berkovici. Loves what he's seeing. His team up by 14. Nine plays, 71 yards, which ironically matches the total yards for Lucien so far in this game. He's got two touchdowns. Gonzalez to kick off. And 
It'll be Cal Ball at the 25. Well, time for a game break, a Lowe's game break. Jenny, let's guess. Notre Dame, Stanford? Justin, you're correct, and it was a wild finish over on Fox. Closing seconds, Conrad Ukropina, 45-yard field goal, and yeah, he nails it. Stanford stuns number six Notre Dame, 38-36 final. Cardinal still alive for the playoff. Amazing finish just across the bay and down the road a bit. A slip tackle by Trevor Davis, and Davis... He picks up 15, and it's first and 10 from the 40, but Notre Dame scored a touchdown with, I think, 30 seconds left to take a lead, and then Stanford came back in the game-winning field goal. Watson takes the handoff. A good effort by him to get just two yards. Salamo Fiso with a tackle, and now Watson is hobbling off the field. Well, they've got a stable of running backs they draw from. You know, Trey Watson, like you said, hobbling off. But Daniel Lasco, number two, he's out of the game tonight with an injury. So they got a couple more guys, but they kind of take the running back by committee approach. They don't really have that one guy that stands out as the lead horse for them. But uh, again, you don't want to you don't want to see any of those running backs go out because they use them all. Goff swings it out to Muhammad behind him. And I think there was a little miscommunication on the idea. Muhammad kept going. I think Goff thought he was going to keep it flat. Well, for those of you who are watching that Stanford Notre Dame game, joining us late, here's the big story. A muck punt led to great field position from the 10 for Arizona State. They capitalized. Lucian with a touchdown. Last drive, his second touchdown. And Arizona State leading 17 to 3 here in the second quarter. Justin Kutcher alongside Steve Hutchinson. Third and eight. Goff dancing around and throws incomplete. Darius Powell looked to be his target. It's going to go back to that incompletion on second down, which, which obviously got them no yards and put them in a third and long situation. And here they come out to punt. You know, I. Again, if you're gonna if you're gonna make this Arizona State defense pay, you, you, a you've got to be on the same page. But you saw in that first that first catch of the of the drive, uh, you know they made the throw the catch. He was able to break a tackle and get a first down. That's what they're gonna have to do. Maybe just easy pitches and catches and let their receivers, the athletes, make the plays. Cole Leininger on to punt, and the play clock is gonna wind down. Delay of game against Cal. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. You know, we, we say we set that up here and say, you know, it's you know easy for us to say, well, let's do this, do that. The thing is, we, we talked about it a little bit. Arizona State is doing a great job of controlling this clock, which is keeping Goff and that offense out of rhythm. They're sitting, it's a little cold out here. They're sitting on the sidelines, unable to to get in a rhythm that they're oh, accustomed to. Really short punts, and it takes an Arizona State bounce, and this will be downed at the 48-yard line. Now 49 of Arizona State. Great field position for the Sun Devils, up by 14. It's a chilly night here in Berkeley. But Arizona State is on fire, leading 17 to 3 over Cal here in the second quarter, 9.58 to go. Mike Bercovici off to a good start, 9 for 13, 123 yards, two touchdowns. Demario Richard in the backfield here. After the 18 yard punt left Arizona State with great starting field position. Richard on the carry and got tripped up, I think, by his own man. I believe it was Cody Cole who maybe tripped him up, a pickup of six. Yeah, either way, that's not a good sign for Cal. You, you can't have too many more guys up in the tackle box anticipating run, and he still almost broke one. There was nobody back in the back end except a single safety about 20 yards deep. Second and four, Berkovici pressured, throws, and he just throws this one away. The pressure was coming from Maurice Harris. Cal taking a little page out of Arizona State's defensive playbook said if you're going to pressure us every down we're going to start doing the same to you that was actually Cameron Walker double numbers for Cal Cameron Walker number three 
Uh, he's, he's their nickel player. Obviously, you see him coming off the edge. Kirkovici wasn't anticipating that. And good job throwing it away. Third down and four. Berkovici stepping up, throws. Was it caught by Cole? At the end, it looked like he reached down. A nine-yard completion. See Cole going against Dozier there. Good route. Puts a foot down on the ground and is able to bust the inside and create a little separation. A third down conversion. And it looks like they may review this one. The ruling on the field of completed pass is under further review. It, it moved. The question is, did it, it, it we know it moved? Did it hit the ground? Yeah, that that other angle was the one you could see it. I think that first angle was the best view at it. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the key is the ball didn't move. It didn't. It didn't change orientation in his hand. You know, you, if, if, if the ground were to, you'd be able to tell. It looks like he he's squeezing it there with his arm. The ball may have touched the ground, but I don't think the ground. I don't think it moved when it hit the ground, and I think that's what the refs are going to look at. Again, there has to be enough evidence to overturn the call on the field. It was ruled a completion. After a review, the ruling on the field stands. Completed pass, first down. Yeah, the ball can the ball can hit the ground, ironically, but if, if, if it looks like he has control of it, the majority of the ball, and the ball does not move when it hits the ground, they're going to say he had possession of it and a tight enough grip where, where he had possession. But again, that's a, that's a good route from a 6'3", 235-pound tight end, especially going up, giving up a couple inches over 5'10", 180-pound Cedric Dozier. I'll take that battle. On first down, Berkovici. Taking the shot to the end zone. Touchdown, Lucien. 36 yards, his third touchdown of the night. Well, these two are picking up exactly where they left off last week. Nine catches, 190 yards last week against Arizona. Six catches, 107 yards already tonight. See a late pressure on Berkovici, but too little, too late. Zane Gonzalez on for the extra point. How about Arizona State offensively? Berkovici and Lucian. They're a dangerous combination here tonight. Three touchdowns already, 24-3 ASU on top. Well, that scoring drive was more typical for Arizona State. Quickly, a minute and 12 seconds, took just four plays. Lucien with his third touchdown catch of the game. This one, a 36-yarder. Berkovici, I think he's found his new favorite target. Yeah, I think he found him last week, and I think they said, hey, that, that worked pretty good. Let's, let's continue to do that. Gonzalez kicking off. Another touchback. Well, Devin Lucian, we talked about last week what he did. Nine catches, 190 yards, and a touchdown against Arizona tonight. The pinball for his first touchdown, back shoulder throw for a second. And just right down the seam and a beautiful catch for his third. Lucian, three seasons at UCLA, look at those numbers. Look at what he's done this year. This is a guy that Berkovici had to talk Todd Graham into taking, a graduate transfer from UCLA. It's paid off. Golf on first down out to Muhammad. Muhammad able to break a tackle. 
And he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Well, they didn't get much there, obviously, but I think it's smart by Tony Franklin, the OC, for Cal. Just go back to doing what we do well, and it's you can't get into panic mode yet. I mean, it's there's a lot of time left in this game. 24 to three, you're down, but you can't get in panic mode. You've got one of the best quarterbacks in college. Just let him do what he does. Pump fake, golf. Good catch. Steven Anderson, 11-yard catch, and a really nice control. A little pump fake by Goff going through his progression. You make the mistake of trying to get too much back too quickly, and you end up going three and out. And the worst thing you're doing is, you're, obviously, you're not continuing drives, but you're not tiring out the defense. They, they need to keep this defense on the field a little bit. Goff out to Muhammad. And Muhammad will get nine yards, so second down and one. And while you say that, while you say there's still a lot of time, and there is, you, you get the feeling that this is one of those possessions, the drives where you need some points for yeah. Cal. Yeah. More importantly, I think you need a touchdown. Yeah, I agree. You know, they they cooked a lot of field goals last week. Uh, they they got a touchdown there at the end, but this offense, for what they're capable of, haven't been put in the in the end zone as much as they should. Watson goes in motion. Golf, the quarterback draw. And Goff will get the first down, also took a hit. And Jared Goff, 6'4", but just 210 pounds. Yeah, but I asked Tony uh, Franklin, the offensive coordinator, on the, on the phone call this week. I said, hey, what, what's the first one word? What can you, how can you sum up? He says tough. He, I mean, he, he gets hit. He gets hit hard. He'll get up, not say a word. So I mean, you, can, you can see that in the way he runs there. Not... Goff. The quick pass, the slam break, and freeze tracks. They needed seven. They got a touchdown. 52 yards. Well, you can sense that the Cal sideline needed that. That's what we talked about in the beginning of the game. If, if Arizona State's going to play the type of defense they play and bring an extra guy, it's going to leave a little one on one on the outside. And he just broke the one tackle and, and took it to the house. That's that's kind of what they've been doing all year. They've got a very good receiving core. Obviously, we know about the quarterback. But it took a while, but got in the end zone. That was an important score for them. We had said it was so important to get points. You said seven points. They got those seven. I mean, that's about as easy as it can be for Bryce Treggs. A run after the catch, untouched. Jared Gong, he put his hands up really early. Yeah, he had the sense nobody was going to catch that. That guy there, seen it all too often. Good protection, just good job from top to bottom. Jared Gong to go to the sideline, take a breather. Try to get this football team back in the game. 24 to 10, 7.06 to go here in the first half. Trex with a 52 yard touchdown catch. Last week, seven catches, 102 yards against Stanford. He's a legacy at Cal. His dad, Brian, when he finished up at Cal, was the school's all time leader with 167 catches. That has since been surpassed. One of them who's passed him, his son Bryce, came into this game with 186. A high short kick taken at the 25-yard line. And ASU will start with the ball at the 32. Well, you can see why Arizona State was trying to slow the game down and run the ball and take as much possession time off the clock as possible because they knew at some point in this game that guy was going to get in a rhythm number 16 on the other sideline and you see how fast they can strike when he does feel comfortable and get on the same page with his receivers the last five possessions for ASU and that punts that turned into the muck punt and it led to a touchdown. Richard in motion, empty backfield for Berkovici. The pass to Tim White, and White gets tackled around the ankles by Jalen Jefferson. 
one of the many wide receiver screens you see in today's college football game and it's hard to stop. You know, there's such a fine line of when the receivers in front of them can block and it's called for a pick. We've already seen one this this game tonight but it's a good way to get five six yards a pop. Richard hit the hole and just got tripped up at the end by Mustafa Jalil. Otherwise he was going for a big run. We saw him a couple series ago get tripped up by his own guy. Mustafa literally with the shoestring tackle there. Berkovici. Guess who? Is it caught? No. Incomplete Lucian. Couldn't come down with control and bounce. Pretty clear. Yep. Left foot lands out of bounds, all the way out of bounds. So it's a break for Cal because that guy's, those two have been on fire. Yeah, pretty much when Berkovici drops back now, look for number 15 somewhere. Yeah. Second and 10. Setting up the screen for Richard. Nice move to avoid the tackle, and then he goes down the sideline and gets pushed out at the 42. A first down. James Looney able to push him out now, picking up 11. Well, missed tackles will kill you. Jalen Jefferson dove at the legs, obviously missed it, and ended up in a, in a big play. Got Cal defense on the heel here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Berkovici drop back and throw one up to Lucian. Melangian with the backfield takes the handoff. And he'll get two yards up to the 40, second down and eight. Berkovici looking towards that sideline for the play. Under five and a half to go here in the first half. Trying to make it four straight possessions with points. The toss to Balash. Balash, look at him go. Finally brought down by Darius Allensworth. A 19-yard run. We flash back against UCLA. Look at Balash keeping those legs going. And his offensive line says, we got you. We'll carry you. They push him into the end zone. Balazs. This time the offensive line can't help him. He's going to lose a yard. Well, Balazs is kind of, it's probably from that run we just saw against UCLA, but he's kind of gotten the reputation for people as being a power runner, kind of a, just a like a Jerome Bettis, like get in there and just kind of run you over. But really, you talk to guys on the team or you read some of the quotes, he's he might be the fastest player on the team. And I don't think he likes the fact that he's known as the bruiser. He was like, hey, I can, I've got top end speed. I can, I can, I can flat out run. He's a big guy, 6'3", 230. Yeah. He goes in motion. Berkovici over the middle, deflected, and it's incomplete. Intended for DJ Foster. Cameron Walker there on the coverage. Well, we talked about Foster and his streak of catching consecutive games catching the ball. He's at 52 now, third and nine. Again, a chance for this Cal defense to come up with a stop and force a field goal attempt. Berkovici, pressure, and Berkovici goes down. Rolling on the field, quarterback is down, fourth down. A loss of seven. Well, that's two back-to-back -back very good series by Cal. One offensively, obviously with the touchdown, and here defensively. Nowhere initially to go down the field, get pressure inside. That's uh, Trevor, Trevor Kelly. Kelly with the sack. Him and Marcus Manley back from that apparent knee injury earlier in this game, but good sign for Cal. They needed that. They needed to step up defensively. A 45-yard field goal attempt by Zane Gonzalez. No problem. Twenty-seven to ten, Arizona State leading Cal. A 
Across the Bay, Union Square, and San Francisco, one of the great cities in this country. 27 to 10. Arizona State leading Cal. Gonzalez kicking off. A booming kick, no chance for a return. Game break time, let's go out to Jenny Taft down south in LA. Yeah, an emotional day for Les Miles, his team with a victory. Cal, we said they needed seven last time. You get the feeling they need more points because ASU's offense is clicking. Golf on first down to pass. Puff fake gets hit as he throws. Was hit by Antonio Longino, who has been such a force this year for Arizona State. Jared Goff came in. We talked about how good he is. He got off to a really good start, and then he missed five of six in a row. I think that's a combination of not possessing the ball, getting out of rhythm. Quick pass. Complete to Trevor Davis. Davis up to the 30, gets five, so third and five. Yeah, I think we're, you know, like I said, not possessing the ball, not being on the field. But then I think that's a little bit of anticipation of that ASU blitz we were talking about. I think he had a clock in his head early on where, wait a minute, I'm, I've, I've only got a, so much time before I get rid of this ball because they're bringing somebody and they weren't on the same page. But you can see as he's getting hit on that previous throw, staying in there, trusting his protection a little bit more. Here comes the blitz. Go over the middle. A stretch by Trex. He lost the ball as he hit the ground, but he's going to come up one yard shy, fourth and one. And Sonny Dykes can't take a chance here. He's got a punt. And that's exactly what Todd Graham was talking about this week. Bring heat, get him to throw the ball quick, one of his hots, and tackle, tackle the receiver when he catches the ball. And it was textbook there by ASU's defense. Leininger keeps this one low. And a good bounce. This will be down at around the 16-yard line, 17-yard line of Arizona State, a 49-yard punt. Well, don't forget, stay tuned for the State Farm FS1 College Football Halftime Show. I'm sure they'll talk about that Stanford-Notre Dame game. Stanford winning on the last second field goal in Palo Alto. Here in Berkeley, it's 27-10. Arizona State leading Cal and amazingly you actually heard some boos from the fans when they punted they had no choice yeah yeah I think they're taking that conservative uh, where they were they were like I said they were yelling it for Sonny Dykes not be so conservative last week and go for it I think that's a little little stretch there from your own 25 DJ Foster in motion Berkovici pushing up the middle and he gets sacked Todd Barr. A loss of four on the sack. Todd Barr, the backup defensive end. Looks like he makes an inside move. You can't really, can't really still see there from the film, but yeah, there you see. Just a quick swim inside over Sam Jones, the left tackle. And this bear defense coming alive the last couple series. That's his fourth sack of the year. Berkovici from his own end zone. Throws will screen for Tim White. And White, you can hear the helmets and pads hitting. He goes up to the 14. Gets a yard. That's got to be the worst. You get one yard, you take that kind of a hit. Oh, man, that and then for the receivers that... Timeout. California. Cal this takes a timeout half. because third be and 13, and they're thinking, hey, Please we may reset. get a chance to minute, return a punt. Seconds. Yeah before this half is over and it should be a pretty cool environment in Hawaii and I'm guessing a bit warmer than here. I was going to say I might have to uh, pour hot water on you. You're starting to get frostbite. <laughs> Third and 13. Balazs in the backfield. Berkovici. Berkovici in trouble again and he goes down again. Sacked this time by Cameron Saffel, loss of three, and a timeout by Cal. Blue Todd Barr, 41. You see him lined up at that same end position. Timeout. 
He'll come in late from your left side, and he'll end up getting the sack, but the pressure was from the right side of the screen. Yeah, nowhere to go with the ball. Cal actually bluffed a little bit on that. They looked like they were going to show some pressure and then backed out at the last second. I think Berkovici was a little confused. Didn't see any open receivers held onto the ball. But again, um, you see the you sense the Cal sideline, especially defensively now. That's two series in a row. They did a good job. Held them to a field goal now. Now a punt deep from their own territory here with a chance. Minute 18. No timeouts left, but that's more than enough time for golf. Matt Hawk to punt from his own end zone. The return man is Noah. But he will not get a chance to return this as it will be down at the 41, a 53 yard punt. A good punt by Hawk. And so no timeouts remaining. 105 to go here in this first half for Jared Goff and Cal. Don't forget the FS1 halftime show is coming up. Well, we talked about that possession a couple possessions ago where they scored that, that being key for them at that point in the game. And I think I think it's important to at least get three here before halftime. On first down, Goff steps up, takes a shot down the field, and that is broken up. A beautiful play by Lord Carrington. That, that ball was a little underthrown, but Carrington did a good, a good job getting his eyes back, knocking the ball down. Good job by the fifth-year senior from Dallas. Trevor Davis was the intended receiver. Second down and 10. Watson splits out. Golf towards the sideline, completes the pass to Maurice Harris. Up to the 50. He got out of bounds to stop the clock. He's about two yards shy of that first down marker. One more. One more. Uh, we talked about Sonny Dykes punting on that last position. I think he might be in four down territory given the situation with the time on the clock as well. Third and two. Everyone's coming, and the receiver slips. Steven Anderson was the receiver. He just went down. He was there for the first down. Like you said, just slip. Good protection. Anderson, one of their more sure-handed receivers out there at the tight end spot. But they are going for it. Fourth and two. Pooch punt. And the Boo Birds are back out here at California Memorial Stadium. The question is, does it speak to the confidence in the defense and what they've done or the lack of confidence right now in no, the offense? I, I think it's smart when you think about it. it you pooch punt it. You know, we used to do that in college, too. Uh, you catch him off guard. You don't have a guy back there to return it. Uh, I think it just shows the confidence he has in his team and his offense. He, listen, let's not give up the ball, at, you know, in our own territory with enough time for them to get some points out of it and some momentum going into halftime. We'll stop him here. Our defense has playing good, been playing good the last couple series. Limit them to no points. We'll come out and get the ball in the second half and go from there. They're, they're not going to have a problem scoring 17 points. Mario Richard gets two yards. Thirty gotta, seconds to go here in the half. You got to remember, Arizona State has all three of their timeouts, so all they had to do is complete a little square in, a slant, get right. you know 10, 15 yards with their kicker, who's who's been on fire tonight, and and you know here they are adding, making it 30 to 10 going yep. in the half with all the momentum. It's I think smart you're right. play, smart yeah. play by Dex. Well, that will do it for this first half. Mike Berkovici off to a really good start for the Sun Devils teaming up with Devin Lucian. They combined for three touchdowns. Sonny Dykes is the end of the and his quarter. team will have to go to the locker room, regroup, and see if they can overcome a 17-point deficit. Coming up after this break.
We'll get you to Jay and Dan in LA for some highlights. 17 point lead for ASU. Hundred and ninety six passing yards, eighty four rushing yards. Look at the difference in offensive plays. A difference of twenty. Yep, that's quick math right here. Third down conversions advantage for Arizona State. Arizona State will kick off to open up this third quarter. Sonny Dykes, the fans didn't like him punting with under a minute to go in that second quarter, but we both thought it was the right move. Let's see what kind of changes they will make here for this second half of play. They will start with the ball at the 25-yard line after that touchback. Cal, this year, they've been able to make the adjustments out of halftime, coming into the third quarter, and this is what they have done. Well, I think that's what I talked about going into the halftime, why it's smart to punt, not give them any more momentum than they've already had in the first half. <laughs> Goff on first down. will hand the ball off to Trey Watson, and Watson will pick up seven yards on first down. And I tell you what, if Watson could start getting some yards on the ground, that opens things up for golf in the air, and then you could really see the offense take off. He takes it again, and he has the first down. Takes it up to the 43. Yep. This, this could be the recipe here. You, you speed up the tempo any, even more than what you're used to, but you mix in positive rushing yards. And I think that's going to take some of the pressure off of Goff. Uh, he had a lot of pressure on his shoulders that, that first half. They didn't get the ball very much, and when they did, he was forced to try to play catch-up. But I think if they can slow it down, methodically work down the field, they'll be all right. Goff to pass, going deep, and it's incomplete. Was looking for Bryce Treggs. We've seen Goff off yeah. pretty I mean, and they're not even, some of these throws haven't even been close. And again, I, I think it has to do with their anticipation. You know, I, I wonder if, if they had a... You know, sometimes coaches in practice do some things, and I wonder if they had like a clock, like, hey, you got three seconds to get this ball off. Him. He's sticking to it, and the receivers aren't aren't where, they, where he's throwing the ball. Kalfani Muhammad is in at tailback. Play action. The pass is complete to Chad Hansen, his first catch of the game. Yeah, you see, they're starting to take the shot on first down, then, then they're second and ten, but if... If they can get half that back and get a manageable third down, I think they'll be all right. In, in, the, in, the first, in the first half, they were running the ball, maybe getting a yard or two, going for a shot on second, and then they were right away third and eight. Third and four. Calfani goes out, and the pass is too hot to handle for Chad Hansen. And fourth down coming up. Well, not, the kind, not the kind of way you'd like to start the second half. But if there's a silver lining to it, at least you got the ball towards midfield where you can punt and hopefully pin them down. Because if Cal's defense comes out to start the third quarter like they ended the second quarter, Arizona's gonna, Arizona State's going to have a little tougher time moving the ball. Leininger on to punt. Gump Hayes is back. And this will be down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line, where Arizona State's offense will take over with Mike Berkovici. We showed you the numbers for the team in the first half. Here are Berkovici's individual numbers. And we came in talking about Jared Goff being the quarterback you're going to talk about. Well, it's Berkovici, the senior. Well, that's just, that right there is being a game manager and being opportun opportunistic. I mean, he, he that's efficiency. That's the definition of an efficient quarterback the first half. 14 to 21, no picks, three touchdowns, given them, taking what the defense has given you. On first down, the handoff to Richard. And Demario Richard up to the 23, gets four, second and six. Yeah. For Cal to have a chance to come back into this game, not only are they going to have to figure it out offensively, but they're going to have to stop the run, something they weren't able to do good enough the first half. Again, it's Richard. This time they do stop him. Going to bring him down for a loss of two. Able to bottle him up. And now third and long coming up. And you mentioned it, the defense for Cal. It seemed like the end of that first half, they started picking up some momentum. Right, and now they, they need a stop. You, sometimes you hear the, the, the old 
analogy bend but don't break for defense well they broke in the first half and let's see if they can kind of tape it together and just bend the second half you want to get the quarterback in a third long situation third and eight Berkovici stepping up that ball is deflected in the air and it's incomplete trying to make the diving play it looked to be Cameron Walker no that would have been a good that would have, that would have been a good spot or a good time in this game for Cal's luck to turn. You see a pretty good pocket. James Looney got his hand on it. Yeah, the starting defensive tackle, James Looney, able to get his hand up. And, but, you know, we talk about Arizona State's offense, and they did a good job. You got to remember that one of those touchdowns was set up by that fumbled punt. So, this game, if, if Cal can continue to play defense like they're doing now. A good punt by Matt Hawk, kind of by Noah going back, and he's not going to touch it. Look at this. Wow. They're going to down this one at the six. That is a huge punt. 74 yards for Matt Hawk. Completely changes the field position. A long field coming up for Cal. Here they are starting out with a 94 yards ahead of them. Flag on the play. This is a free play for Goff. And he completes the pass. Chad Hansen down the sideline. And let's see where they mark him out. The trail officials going to mark him out at the 42, a 52 yard completion. Offside. Defense number one. The penalties decline. Result of the play is the first down. One of the things you love about college football is how fast momentum changes. In the <laughs> NFL, it does change, but the pendulum is a lot slower to swing. And in college, uh, you know, here we are talking about the punt and everything's going ASU's way. One play. They get more than halfway down the field and, and really Cal's, like I said earlier, Cal's not out of this game. They just gotta limit the mistakes, get on the same page. You know, they, they get a touchdown here, it's a ten point game. I love the fact that Jared Goff knew he had the free play, had his man open downfield. Let's go for it. First and ten. Goff throws off the shoulder pads of Bryce Trex. That's the second pass tonight where Goff has hit the shoulder pads of a receiver. And it's second and ten. At that time, Arizona State. Bringing five or six guys there. Good pick up by the line. And like you said, you, just like they draw it up. Bring bring the bring the blitz, pick it up, leave them one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and gotta make the catch. Goff completes it to Harris. Harris with some room to run. And Harris gets spun around up to the 30, gets 12. One of the things we talked about is, is what Todd Graham talked about before the game was how good Jared Goff was at looking off the receiver. Here you see to look to the right. You see the defense flow to the right side of the screen and then throw the wide receiver screen back. The defense momentum was completely going opposite. That's why it turned into a big play. First and 10 from the 30. Golf pressure coming from the back side, throws it incomplete. The pressure was coming from Longino. Another thing, one of those intangibles we've talked about with Jared Goff. I think he felt the pressure coming from his right side and just drifted off enough, drifted off enough out of the pocket to be able to throw that. Even though it wouldn't have been grounding, he was it was a receiver in the area. But I don't think that was ever meant to be close to the receiver. It was just meant to throw it away, live to play a, another down. And, here you are, second and ten. You're already in field goal range. Hand off Watson. Good cutback by Watson. Still on his feet. Trey Watson down inside the five. What a run. 25 yards. Well, there's, there's nothing that will excite an offensive line and a sideline and, and a team for that matter than an exciting hard-nosed run by your running back. And he shows it all there. Flash of of the feet, spin, breaks a couple tackles, good hard run. Give it to him again, and he walks in. Touchdown, Cal. Just like that, give it to the hot hand.
Good fake after the handoff. Kind of froze the defense and Trey Watson was, was able to get around the right side and walk in easily. And we just talked about how the momentum from the punt pinned him down there. And Jared Goff made quick work of that. The drive began on the six. The extra point is good for Anderson. 94 yards, a minute and 17. The big play, the 52-yard pass, and a five-yard touchdown run for Trey Watson. Ten-point game here in Berkeley. Jared Goff just broke his own single-season record now with 3,982 passing yards. 94 plays, 94 yards they went on six plays to make this a 10-point game. And now Matt Anderson will kick off with Tim White back deep. Todd Graham talking to his crew. We talk about momentum, how it can shift. You said it, that pendulum. It moves quickly. Yeah, Todd Graham talking with his defense. I'd be saying, hey guys, don't worry, it happens to everybody against this guy. <laughs> you just gotta figure out how to slow the bleeding down. I don't think you're gonna stop it. But you gotta slow it down, keep everything in front of you. Again, the high short kick. White takes it. And around the 25, breaks the tackle. White trying to reverse fields and look at him. Good return up to the 46-yard line. Fox Sports supports, proudly supports Folds of Honor and its mission of providing educational scholarships to families of military members who have been killed or disabled while serving our country. For more information, visit foxsportsupports.com. Truly a fantastic foundation. I can't really figure out why Cal is deciding to kind of pooch those kickoffs. I'm with you. Uh, uh, it's got to be the win. It... On first down, it's kept by Berkovici. And he's got himself a first down, 12 yards on the quarterback keeper. And you give him the ball really at midfield. Now, I know it was a good run after the catch on the kickoff return, but here you are. You're already almost to the 40. One play into it. You had the momentum in your, in your corner, and now it's starting to swing back. Berkovici will hand off this time. Good patience by Demario Richard as he brings it up to the 34. Gets eight. Well, Cal so far in this half and did a great job of limiting the amount of runs on the amount of yards on first down runs. And so far they're back to what they were doing in the first half. That zone read. It's Richard. And he looks like he's just short. Seems like Arizona State's had the win this entire game. It's back to back quarters, but if they can if they can force a fourth down here, maybe Todd Graham might think about kicking it with the win. On third and one, it's Richard again. And he's got the first down. Not gonna matter now. Devontae Wilson with a tackle, but a four-yard pickup on third and one. And now coming in at quarterback is Manny Wilkins. We saw them try this once in the first half, did ASU. Kalen Balazs in at tailback. It's kicked by Wilkins, and Wilkins gets outside. Wilkins diving. He's going to be marked out at the four. Luke Rubenzer able to chase him down, but a 25-yard run for the backup quarterback, Manny Wilkins. Just a, just a simple keeper there. And like you said, Luke Rubenzer, although he saves, he saves the, the touchdown there, he, was, he got sucked up in far enough for the draw to get outside of him and, and get down the field. And the flag is thrown. Substitution infraction. Offense, 12 players in the formation. Five-yard penalty, still first down. 
I got to go back to, to saying that the, the kickoff is, is kind of what changed the momentum here on this drive. And it just seems like Cal's defense got out there and was like, man, we, you know, they've already got gained half the field of play here. Mm -hmm. And in a, in a couple of plays, it just didn't seem like the same defense that was out there the first couple of drives of this quarter. It's going to be first and goal from the eight here for ASU. Bukovici back in, throws to the end zone, and that's deflected. Very nice play by Stephon McClure. Stephen McClure breaking it up. Yeah, we talked to Art Kaufman, the defensive coordinator, so we can ask him. I said, who are the leaders on that defense? First name came out of his mouth was McClure, and let's see why. Great job getting his hand up at the last second over defending D.J. Foster. Cal got a little bit of a break, a little bit of a more breathing room with that that penalty on ASU. And now they're down to second goal. Let's see if they can hold them out. Berkovici comes back, completes the pass to Tim White, but White is brought down after a pickup of three. So third and goal is coming up. Hardy Nickerson and McClure combined for the tackle. That's 13 tackles for Hardy Nickerson in this game. We'll see Berkovici doing his own Jared Goff impression, looking off the, the receiver for the screen, but I think Cal de Cal's defense have seen that enough in practice to fall for it. Like you said, Nickerson did a good job, open field tackle. And now a timeout taken by ASU. Oh, no. Third and Never goal the from the six the coming half. up for the Sun Devils, leading by 10. College football here on FS1 is presented by K Jewelers. Marty Nickerson with 13 tackles on the night. They're hoping he can come up with another one. Facing third and goal from the sixth. Ten point lead for ASU. And Hutch, we were talking during the break. This is a big, big moment in the game yet again. Yeah, I, I just it just seems to me that a lot of air was taken out of Cal's defense when they Arizona State took over at midfield. Now, if they can hold them to a field goal here, the way golf's been going the last couple series, three is a lot better than seven. Berkovici lofting one, and that's incomplete, intended for DJ Foster. So the defense, as you said before, bend but don't break. Right. It doesn't matter how well they move the ball in between the 20s. If you're keeping the field goals with the quarterback and receivers you have, and then when you're, you're mixing in the run game a little bit now, you know, there's still plenty of time. They're down by 10. They, they, there's no way for them, there's no reason for them to abandon that run game. But it seems like, again, you, you, they can incorporate this run game, get some of the pressure off golf shoulders, see how fast they can strike. 24-yard field goal attempt for Gonzalez, and Zane Gonzalez is three for three on the night, and it makes it a 13-point lead. But Sonny Dykes, he approves of his defense. He says, all right, offense, now it's your turn. When you think about Cal and their quarterbacks over history, Steve Barkowski, number one overall pick when he left Cal, then Kyle Bowler, first rounder for the Baltimore Ravens. And really the one guy you really think of is Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers, what he did at Cal, made a name for himself, slipped in that draft, was waiting, waiting, waiting. Green Bay called his name. He waited some more and then finally got a chance to start when Brett Favre left. And now it's Jared Goff's turn as the quarterback of Cal. Speaking of Goff, let's see what he thinks about being a QB here for the Golden Bears. And I see all these great quarterbacks that played here. That's what kind of makes me step back is because I watched all those guys. I was here as a fan. The mental side of the game is where I've grown the most. I think just kind of understanding defenses and understanding protections and you know where you want to go with the ball in certain situations. I'm very confident in my abilities. You want to bring Cal back to that culture. You want to you know bring it back to when you were, when you were a kid and everything was great. Well, he's brought him back to being bowl eligible for the first time since 2011. Watson spinning. And Watson is stuck. He's going to lose a yard. 
Longino and Smallwood combined for the tackle for a loss. Jared Goff, tonight there is a player down at Smallwood for ASU. Yeah, that's one guy they don't want to see go down. They've got about a, well, I guess they, they run what you'd say a three-man rotation in that three-man front of, of theirs of, of ASU. And when, when one of the three goes down, that, that makes them pretty paper thin. And Smallwood leads all ASU defense alignment and tackles entering this game with 37. The Cal Bears on their last drive, starting at their own six, took advantage of a free play, 52 yards to Chad Hansen. Maurice Harris with a good play. And then it was a couple of runs by Trey Watson. This one the most impressive, and then he just was able to walk it in from five yards out. Well, the penalty helped that you know that free play, but if you look at it, what what got them down the field the quickest on that drive? It was balance. You know, a couple nice wide receiver screen there. You had a couple big runs by Watson, but you know, they have the ability, and that was a 94-yard drive that was about in the blink of an eye. So let's see if they stick with that up tempo. Mixing it up, run pass combination they did that worked well that last drive. Galfani Muhammad back in at tailback on second down and 11. Goff going downfield wide open is Triggs. Triggs runs out of bounds at the 27 yard line. I'm not so sure how he got wide open, but we'll guess we'll see here. By well, the safety bit inside. And the double move opened him up on the outside down the field. And Quishy Brown. Well, it looked like it was a, a blown coverage there. He must have saw something inside that made him jump inside. Here's Muhammad with a good run on first down. He gets 12 more yards. 49 yards on the pass play. Now 12 yards on this. Momentum again towards Cal as they have first and 10 from the 16-yard line. Goff deflected, incomplete, looking for tricks. DJ Calhoun was the one who got a hand on it for ASU. I think that was a, that saved the touchdown, getting that hand up, because actually that was Lawler, I believe, the receiver there, and it looked like he had a step on him. I think if he, if he would able, if that ball was clean, he would have been able to catch that and outrun the, the coverage there. Second and ten towards the end zone, too deep. And it looked like Trevor Davis was looking for a flag. It's tough to see from our angle in the booth, but yeah, there was definitely, definitely some hands, some extracurricular activity there. But although, you know, it looked like maybe Davis's right arm was was on the defender as well and if, if both arms they're kind of going back and forth the refs aren't going to call that third and ten pressure coming golf throws caught touchdown chad hansen 16 yards You're going to see right here why the NFL thinks he's going to be a special player. You see him look off this receiver to the left, give give time for Chad Hansen to, to get inside on his on the coverage. He throws a perfect dart for the score. Matt Anderson on to make it a six-point game. It took a minute and ten seconds. Jared Goff able to find Chad Hansen. We've got ourselves a ball game once again here in Berkeley, 30-24. 
Happy sideline right now for Cal as they have climbed back into this game, trailing by six. So that means if one sideline is happy, the other one is not. Here you see Todd Graham talking to his freshman safety, Kareem Orr, who stepped into this game at safety, started the year at cornerback, actually leads the team five interceptions, but you know, Arizona State's having a hard time this season all year defending the pass. They're second to last in the conference against the pass. See why. Again, the high short kick and out of bounds with a foot on the line, and the flags come flying in, and that short kick is now going to be compounded with a mistake. Looks like it's going to be a personal foul for a late hit, and if that's the case, it's on Patrick Worstell, special teams for Cal. Well, it's obvious that Cal does not. Kick off, out of bounds, oh. kicking team number nine. Yeah. The receiver was standing out of bounds when he received the kick. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down, Arizona State. My apologies. I thought they were saying it for the shove afterwards. Now, his left foot was, was out of bounds when he caught the ball. So that's ruled the same as kickoff out of bounds. But I, I, I can't figure it out why Cal is... Continuing to give them now obviously this isn't midfield, but I would take my chances kicking it deep On first down Richard takes the handoff as a blocker and Richard Following the block a big number 55 Christian Westerman takes it 21 yards and there they are right around now in Cal territory. Yeah yeah, let's see if ASU continues to stay methodical. I mean, normally this is the spot where Mike Norvell, the offense coordinator, wants to sh throw it deep. But you know, I, I think they they had a game plan coming in here where they were gonna they were gonna be a run first team and throw when they had the opportunities. And let's see if they stick with it. First five drives, they were unstoppable. Berkovici throws high. Nice catch by Epps, who loses it all the way down, and, and they're, they're gonna, gonna say down. he runs down. Field. The receiver was down before the ball came out. First down. Well, this is what running the ball good will set up for you. Wide open tight end. And uh, Cal obviously playing to stop the run, and nobody back home, nobody back there to stop the uh, the tight end seam route. It was a 25-yard completion to Raymond Epps. Richard on the carry. We'll get a couple of yards. Oh, he's clearly down. If it wasn't the knee, it was the forearm that made him down there, and that's a good call by the ref. Kalen Balash comes in at tailback now for ASU. Again inside the 20. Manny Wilkins is in that quarterback. He keeps it. Three yard pickup. Berkovici will come back in third down. And again, Cal is trying to force a field goal as opposed to another first down and maybe a touchdown. They did it on the last drive. You start to get the sense that if Arizona State's going to start kicking field goals to end every drive, Cal's going yep. Cal's going to be sitting good at the end of this game because I don't know if you're going to be able to stop Goff once he gets in rhythm, which I think he's already in. Berkovici stepping up over the middle. It's incomplete. Intended. It looked like DJ Foster and Foster's holding his wrist as he's going to the sideline. I think that's Bellage. Oh, excuse me, Bellage, you're right. Yeah, I think it's Bellage. And, you know, coming into the game, Demario Richard, now although he doesn't look like it, I think he was a little bit banged up, but they weren't they weren't sure if he was gonna play it. Had a good warm-up in, in pregame, so obviously he's out there and running the ball well, but that doesn't leave too many backs left that Bellage isn't able to, to go back in. Keep an eye on that. 31 yard attempt for Gonzalez. And he is now four for four on the night. But Hutch, as you said, if ASU keeps on kicking field goals, bodes well for Cal as they trail by nine.
Todd Graham, his team settles for a field goal again, and yet it's like this bend but don't break philosophy for Cal. Yeah, to me, to me, looking at him right here, at least this half of football so far in this third quarter, they, they remind me of the Indianapolis Colts when they had Peyton Manning. I mean, they, they would let you get it, rack up as many yards and all the stats you want in between the 20s, but when it came down to it, they were going to make you kick field goals knowing that their quarterback was going to engineer a seven-point, you know, seven-point drive every time they got the ball. So. Like you said, if they continue to trade field goals for, for touchdowns with golf, um, it's a matter of time before Cal takes the lead here. And you mentioned Peyton Manning. We showed you Aaron Rodgers. Those are the two guys that Jared Goff grew up watching, tried to emulate. Goff, of course, playing here at Cal. You watch his footwork, and he, he moves his feet like Peyton Manning does. On first down, Watson. Chips and falls forward for two yards. Yeah, I think he tripped on the, on the back of uh, his center's legs there, Dominic Granado, 55. Um, just tried to make a jump cut there and got tripped up a little bit. Looked like the hole was there. And at least they got positive yards. Again, there was too many times early in this game that Arizona State was forcing a, a minus one, minus two on first down, getting them in a second 12 situation. But at least they're moving, moving in a positive direction. Second down and eight. It's coming. Goff steps up over the middle, and the pass is complete to Steven Anderson. First down, moving the chains. Goff sees the pressure coming from the left side. What does he, what does he do? Scoots a little bit to the right, just enough for him to be able to step up in the pocket and complete the pass. Pump fake. And now Goff throws it away. I really, really no like his pocket presence. Down. Number nine was in the area, second down. No, I agree. It, it, you know, even though you it, you look at him from up here and you're thinking, well, does he see, does he see that guy that's bearing down from him at the you know mm -hmm. uh, off his blind side? But he'll he'll float away from him. He's got a he's got a pretty good presence, and that's something you can't teach. Kalfani Muhammad in. Pressure coming again. And the pass is incomplete. Was looking for Chad Hansen. Third and ten coming up, but the pressure was coming on that blitz. Yeah, we've seen that a number of times. I mean, we could almost make a highlight reel of the, the amount of times him and the receivers haven't been on the same page. And again, I think it timing. I think yeah. you talk about the pocket presence. I think I think Jared knows when he has to get rid of the ball. He just doesn't have receivers with their heads turned when he does throw it. Two for eight on third downs tonight are the Golden Bears. Blitz coming, he steps up. Golf, he's gonna run for it. He's got the first down and more and slides. There's a little glimpse of Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see, you'll see Rodgers doing that time and time again on Sundays. And great job, he saw the blitz coming. Again, floated off to the left a little bit, found that open scene and took it. Knew what the defense was going to give him, knew that he had the middle of the field open. Smart play. A third down conversion. On the first down, Kalfani Muhammad gets stuffed at the line, second and ten. But it extends this drive. And the last three drives for Cal were all quick. All touchdown drives, under two minutes apiece. The tailback Trey Watson and Watson gets hit by Kareem Orr. Gets three. Third and seven here. And this is where you're in, I think, two down territory if you're Cal. Yeah, you again, I, I don't know what Sonny Dykes is thinking, but I think you you're conservative at this point. I mean you're you're you close the gap on the scoreboard. You've got plenty of time left. Third and seven. Go. Completes once again to Anderson, who stretches for the first down. Back to back third down conversions for Cal on the drive. Hey, you mentioned earlier he, he looks like Peyton Manning in the pocket there. You, you couldn't see it on the replay here, but those feet were moving and perfect strike. Goff checks back to the sideline. 
two minutes to play here in this third quarter. Goff, keeping the eyes down the field, completes the pass to Kenny Lawler. Lawler's first catch of the night, down to the eight, good for 21. Sound like a broken record on this drive here, but watch the presence of Goff in the pocket. Eyes always downfield. Finds an open lane and completes the strike. To the corner. Touchdown, Maurice Harris. They've tried the corner route. The corner fade a couple times tonight. He's either over, overthrown the receiver, or they haven't connected for one reason or another, but just like the Cal offense this second, this second half, everybody's kind of got on the same page and come to life for the most part. Matt Anderson's extra point. Four straight touchdown drives orchestrated by Jared Goff. This game's turning out to be a lot of fun. Another game which is going to be a lot of fun. The big... California trailing 33 to 31. We talked about it at the beginning of this half. They are a good third quarter team. They've done very well here in this third quarter. And Jared Goff setting single season Records yet again, back-to-back -back years he's done that. 41-01, 35 touchdowns. Goff had that big 20-yard run on third down. That was the longest one of his career. Now Anderson keeps it low this time, and that's much more effective. Tim White gets surrounded. I like that play a lot better. And this was ASU coming off the field. Uh, you're going to see some frustration, some guys throwing their arms down. Coach Todd Graham trying to keep them positive. You know, this is something they've seen all too much this year. See Demetrius Cherry frustrated walking away from Coach Graham. He's trying to keep their head into it. The last couple of drives for Arizona State has begun a 35, 40 yard line or so. This time, they're back at their own 13. The yeah. last two resulted in field goals. Yeah, when you get the ball at midfield, it makes it easy on the offensive coordinator to call plays. Now they've got to go and put together a sustained drive, the length of the field, see if they can do it. Bert Gavici throws on the run, and he completes that pass to Gary Chambers, the first catch of the night for Chambers. 27-yard completion. That play was all Berkovici keeping the play alive with his feet. Chambers found a good good spot. They were on the same page. Stayed with his quarterback, kept him in his field of view, and completed the ball. A handoff to T.J. Foster gets wrapped up in the backfield. Cal was all over that. Well, the fact that D.J. Foster is in the backfield. I'm not sure if Kalen Balazs is, if that hand injury was something a little bit more than just something he could shake off because Foster now a wide receiver. James Looney got that tackle for a loss of six. Berkovici throwing. And please that pass to Chambers again. Seven yard completion, so third and long coming up, and you got to think that ASU will say, you know what, let's just run this one out, let the clock expire, talk about it when we come back for the fourth quarter. It was a 17 point lead at the half for ASU as we go to the fourth quarter here in Berkeley. The Golden Bears have stormed back, they trail by two and 39 coming up for the Sun Devils when we come back. We go to the fourth quarter, and I think momentum may have shifted. The Cal team, they're fired up. 
Yeah, I wonder if somebody told them it's still third down. They haven't, they didn't stop them yet, but they're in a good position, better than they have been for a while. They're got Arizona State kind of their own territory for the first time in a long time. They certainly won that third quarter. Berkovici on third and nine throws and completes that pass to Demario Richard out of the backfield for 11, and that's a big, big third down conversion. Yeah, you said it, Justin. I, I think everybody on Arizona State's uh, sideline was able to take a, a deep breath when they converted that because the way the momentum's been going and Cal's been scoring, I think they knew they needed to convert that. On first down, Berkovici pressure, and he gets sacked. Kyle Cragen, his sixth sack of the year, a loss of five. See him at the bottom of your screen here, and he's just going to beat him with a speed move. Dip and rip, and that wasn't a coverage sack. He was, he just beat him clean. And good hustle. Good job by Cragen. You know, we came in talking about the defense of ASU, what they do, all the pressure. They lead the nation in sacks per game at right. four. They've gotten none. The offensive line for Cal's been great, but the defense for Cal has four. Richard up the middle. And he gets up to the 44. Yeah, there was a point in the, I believe it was the second quarter after Arizona State came out, went right down the field in opening drive. But Cal's defense kind of settled down, and we saw him start to get a couple sacks, force a three and out. Ever since then, they, you know, they, they might have given up some more points, but it's been, you got to remember, there was a lot of those points this half in, in the end of the second quarter were field goals, and that bend, bend and not break mentality has been working for him thus far. ASU, 8 for 16 on third downs. We saw them just convert one. Berkovici, they're going to convert another one. The pass is caught by D.J. Foster, 14 yards. Cal opting to go with a three-man rush, which means they're going to drop eight. Berkovici's still able to find an open receiver in the zone on the outside. I think Cal suits them better when they have four guys rushing the passer. They've been more effective when, when either they bring a, a fifth guy on a blitz, a linebacker, or, or an edge rush, along with those four guys up front. Richard up the middle. To the 39, gets three. If Arizona State goes all the way down the field here and ends up kicking a field goal, I think that's a win for Cal. Yep. Because you, you, you gave their defense, you, you know, as the special teams finally gave them a chance. You know, when you're, when you're, like we talked about earlier, when you're lining them up with half the field to go, that's not fair. Berkovici to Tim White. And a good tackle made there by Jake Kearney. Six-yard pickup, so third and short coming up. a big third down for Cal because then you, you force Arizona State to make a decision. Richard. No decision needed. No, it was easy for Todd Graham to kick the field goals in that situation when they got in fourth down because they had the win. But fourth quarter changed the direction. Uh, those decisions aren't going to be as easy and it might come down to a field goal decision in this game yet. You know, it was funny. I was actually thinking before that play, do they take a shot down the field because you look like it was two down territory? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're not going to punt, and I don't right. know if you can kick a field goal there. As good as your field goal kicker is, into the win. So, yeah, maybe you take a shot and then go for it on fourth down. I, I agree. 11 play on the drive. Flag on the play. Berkovici steps up, completes the pass to Lucian. And that's the first time we've called his name in a long time. He had that great first half. Be a legal shift. Our Our referee offside. is Land Clark. Not sure they know. Illegal formation. Offense. Too many players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Again, Arizona State, a team that's been so good. Few penalties, ninth in the country. 
Yeah, from that picture there on the replay, you see the five linemen. I, looks like there might have been six. The wideout made six. Obviously, you need seven. Richard gets hit. Back at the line of scrimmage. A good job by this defense for Cal. Stiffing out that run, and you had talked about it at the very beginning. One of the keys was stopping the run against Arizona State. Yeah, they've done a better job all the way around this half. They've stopped the run a, a little slightly better. Play action here, Berkovici. Locked in. Is there a flag? There it is. Pass interference. Tim White, the intended receiver. Stephen McClure on the coverage. Gonna see McClure step step with by step. But. Pass interference. Defense number 21. Yeah, the, I, I think what the I think what they're calling honestly was the left hand. Yep. You see the left hand grab the left arm. Anytime a receiver looks like he's gonna go up, and obviously you'd go up with two hands to catch up ball. When one arm's down, hey, there's something that right here. So that's what they're calling. Even though it didn't look like the right arm or the body got in the way, I think it was the left arm tugging. At, at, at the left arm of the receiver. That could prove to be a critical play in this game. Let's see what happens the remainder of this drive. On first down, Richard back up the middle. And he takes it up to the 16, gets five. Well, let's just say Arizona State scores a touchdown here, right? Then, it, then you're a nine-point game, and you're a two-possession game. Now, we know how fast Cal can strike offensively. The thing I'm worried about, or I would be worried about if I'm Cal, is how Arizona State has been controlling the clock most of the game with, with this game with the run game. So two, two, two possession game, they're gonna get the ball back in between. You gotta be able to stop the run. Berkovici setting up the screen and it's dropped by Demario Richard. All right, here you go again. It seems like we're a broken record, but third and five, another big opportunity for Cal's defense. Can they come up with a stop and force a field goal? Well, Cal's doing an excellent job all night. To, or, uh, Arizona State, I'm sorry, he's done an excellent job all night converting third downs. I, I don't I don't have it in front of me, but I know they're... Now you they, do. They've 10 for be, 18. 10 for 18. How about that? I mean, well over 50%, which is extremely good. Berkovici throws, and it's incomplete. The tight end, Raymond Epps, they say did not hang on to it. Going on the field is incomplete pass, first down. Epps is saying, yes, I did. Take a look here. You can't tell from that angle, but again, it's it's like the one we saw in the, f in the first half. See, it looked like Unlike the one in the first half, when I was talking about the ball can actually hit the ground, that one it looked like the ball rotated a little bit, which means, you know, the ref saw the ball move. Obviously, it was he, he, he knew that the ground caused the ball to move, and, and it's incomplete pass. A 34-yard attempt for Zane Gonzalez, and he is perfect on the night. Five for five. Cal's defense holds them again. Another drive ends in a field goal for ASU. Five-point lead. Another drive for Mike Berkovici's ASU Sun Devils results in a field goal. The fifth of the night for Zane Gonzalez. The last touchdown for ASU, 8.46 to go in the second quarter. Low kick, Trey Watson from the four. Watson, a good return. Is there a flag? Cal was hoping for one, no flag. So that means we've got tonight's four game summary. And it was a good start for ASU. See what they did their first six drives. Cal. They've responded here in the second half. Well, they came out, Arizona State, white hot. You know, Todd Graham wasn't going to have them have any kind of hangover from the win against Arizona last week. And since the, some point in the second quarter, it's been all cap. Watson, a good run on 
first down. Look at Trey Watson keep those feet going. And Trey Watson gets 13 yards for the first down. It's an inside zone. Nothing crazy about it. Good job up front by the guys blocking, but Watson finds the crease and continues to cut and scratch and claw his way for more yards. Play action. Golf. And that's incomplete, out of bounds, intended for Trevor Davis. It's about the, probably the worst, technically the worst play we've seen Goff make tonight. I mean, you, usually on those deep balls, you talk to any quarterback coach, you're going to say, just throw it up there and keep it in field of play and give your guy a chance. That was six, seven yards out of bounds. Second and ten, Kelfani Muhammad comes in. Pressure coming up the middle. Golf gets rid of it. Mohammed wide open down the sideline. Great cutback. Mohammed to the end zone. Touchdown. 58 yards. Much like with Aaron Rodgers, you got to be really careful when you blitz against Jared Goff. Yeah, absolutely. I think he read. He read it. You're going to see two, three techniques. It's called the Panther X stunt or the Steeler X made famous by the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're going to, both linebackers are going to cross. Goff read it perfectly. The line did a great job of picking it up. And again, like I said earlier, if you're going to blitz him, that means you're going to leave somebody one on one. In this case, there was none on one, and he took it to the house. Going for two here for a three point lead. Cal has its first lead of the night. Trey Watson is in. Three plays, 71 yards, 35 seconds. That's all it took for Cal to finally take its first lead. is going to be thrown down. So that means no two-point conversion. But guess what? They still have the lead. A one-point lead. 58 yards to Kalfani Muhammad. Cal up by one. Sonny Dykes, his team, has taken the lead here in Berkeley. The 58-yard touchdown catch by Kalfani Muhammad. And with that touchdown pass, Jared Goff now has 36 touchdowns on the season. He also has two of 50-plus yards in this game. Back deep is Tim White awaiting the kickoff from Matt Anderson. Let's see if my win theory came true here. It's a high short one again. Hartley. Coming up to make the play is White. White up to the 34. ASU, they've had opportunities, but they just could not convert. Hey, you're going to see an overthrow. Quarterback receiver not the same page. Kick a field goal. Pass off the hands of Balazs there. Field goal. Normally, you're happy at the end of drives that you get points off of. But when you're playing a team like Cal with the offense they have, the receivers, the quarterback, which we've mentioned numerous times tonight, when you're getting three and they're all of a sudden getting hot and getting seven every drive in a, in a hurry, the three against seven doesn't trade off and hold up very, very long. That's how you end up where we are now with Cal with a one point lead, first of the game. Richard. A good cutback gets chased down from behind by Hardy Nickerson. A five yard run, second down and five. Right. Hardy Nickerson now with 16 tackles on the night.
Kept by Berkovich. He throws down the sideline. Lucian. He gets loose. And he gets shoved out by Rubenzer. We hadn't heard his name much in the second half. He was all over the first half, and finally he gets it, and it's 51 yards. Well, I think the I think the corner was thinking that uh, Berkovici was going to run the option there, but when the when the when they sucked up, he left Lucian wide open and just kind of dumped it off. So I don't know if he can call it a blown coverage. Maybe I think he was came up to run support. Richard tackled at the four. You know what that reminded me of? It, it's like a K-State play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was I was thinking the same thing. You see it more and more, especially with these teams that do the the, the, the zone read or the option. It's kind of like they, they pop it in there once or twice a game where you kind of forget, oh, he's still behind the line of scrimmage, technically he can throw it. That's what happened there. Berkovici rolling out to the right. Throwing, and he just throws this one away. So third and goal coming up, and now you're thinking, if you're ASU, oh man, no, we can't settle for a field goal again. Right. Right. It's kind of a little bit of a role reversal from a week ago. I mean, Cal was in this situation a lot against Stanford. They get down there, they move the ball, kick field goals, and Stanford score a touchdown. So, kind of interesting to see what happens here. Granted, it's third down, and it's a manageable four or five yard situation, but if they don't get it here, Cal's done their job again. I think Todd, I, I think you see Todd Graham go for it. Berkovici. Incomplete. Looking for Jalen Harvey. So fourth and goal. I think he got a kick here to get the lead. Yeah, well, that's, that's a throw Berkovici wish he had back. Gonna th he threw that ball inside where Jalen Harvey was thinking outside on the corner route. Berkovici threw it over the wrong shoulder. Easy play to defend. He didn't have to defend it. He took himself <laughs> out of the play. But again, here you are. They're kicking a field goal. Zane Gonzalez for a sixth field goal of the night. Little chip shot. He stays perfect. Six for six. But after a 51-yard play, they had to settle for three, back up on top by two. In this fourth quarter, always traffic. In Northern California, Southern California, maybe Middle California is okay. But once again, ASU has to settle for a field goal, and that means a busy night for Zane Gonzalez, a school record six field goals on the night. He's hit from 21, 45, 24, 31, 34, 22. And those are your lottery numbers. And a touchback here, which will bring out Jared Goff in the offense once again. And watching Goff tonight, he, to me, is the most pro-ready, pro-style quarterback I've seen in quite some time in college football. Well, the thing that impresses me about him after watching him tonight is we've covered a lot of games this year. and We've seen a lot of quarterbacks, good quarterbacks. But the difference between him and those other guys is when that first read doesn't open, maybe the second read, they take off with their legs. He finds time to move around the pocket, eyes always downfield, and he's making the throw. Trey Watson on first down. A good tackle made by the freshman Kareem Orr, three yards for Watson. He just has a presence about him, always keeping that, that the eyes downfield, like you said. Now, give credit to his offensive line, too. They've kept him pretty much upright all night long. Blitz is coming. He completes the pass to Davis. And Davis gets back to the line of scrimmage. Third and seven coming up here for the Bears. Well, you said it. Offensive line, a lot of credit to them so far to this point. And talking about an Arizona State defense that's double-digit sacks in the last two games. I think 33 sacks over the last six games. And, of course, they came into the game. in the last two. Yeah, 40, 44 sacks, I believe, this season, tied for first in the country. So they could definitely get after the quarterback. Pressure coming again. Golf. Looking to run, Goff, where does he get out? Look at him, he found the chains, gets out, and gets the first down. I think that's, if I'm not mistaken, the second time 
We've actually seen him run. I mean, he look at his eyes. He's still looking for a receiver. Probably up into the point where he knew where the line of scrimmage was, and then he saw the marker and figured he could get there. But both runs on third down, both runs led to first downs. Goff now going deep down the sideline. Flag is thrown, pass interference. Chad Hansen, the intended receiver. Questy Brown on the coverage. Well, I talked about the last drive where I didn't think he gave his receiver. Pass interference. Defense number 10. A 15 yard penalty with an automatic first down. There was a couple times he gave he didn't give his receiver a chance to go up and catch the ball. Here he underthrows it, but it's perfect because it forced the defender to interfere just to just to have a chance of, of keeping the ball from being completed. So first and 10 now from the 49 of ASU. Delfani Muhammad in a tailback. Muhammad had the touchdown catch on the last drive. Good pickup by Muhammad and a great catch by Powell. Powell for the end zone and another touchdown. 49 yards. Well, this play was made possible, obviously, the throw and the catch. But Kalfani Muhammad with the blitz pickup. You'll see him on the right side of your screen coming across, picking up the defender. Gave Goff the time to make the connection. And like we talked about all game, when you're when you're a blitz happy team like Arizona State is, and you're bringing more than they have blockers, that leaves you, means you're leaving guys one on one on the outside. And if you can make one of those guys miss. Goff up the middle, two point conversion. effective a couple of first downs on third down so now the two-point conversion five straight drives ends in touchdowns for Cal back and forth here in the fourth quarter and Cal with their fifth straight touchdown 45 39 but Hutch sometimes it's the plays you don't see that lead to the big plays well, you're right. I mean, a lot of times a thankless job for a running back is blitz pickup. And you're going to see Kalfani Muhammad here come across, read the read the linebacker perfect, Salamo, Fiso, and he's going to pick him up. Fiso, one of the leaders in that defense, guys that, that leads, one of the guys that leads the country is in tackles for losses, quarterback hits, all that stuff. Picked him up perfect, and that's what made that play go. Matt Anderson will kick off with Tim White back deep. And again, he's going to keep it low because that's his most effective way to get it deep. And Tim White lost the football. Came loose. Did he jump back on top? And it will stay ASU ball. Breaks one tackle. Kind of punches it out. I can't see who it was that got a hand on the ball there. But he was able to fall back on it. The other impressive stat here is Arizona State is ahead in this game on the turnover margin after that botched punt. It's another hole Cal had to dig themselves out of, which they managed to do along the way. On first down. The handoff to Demario Richard, and Richard will get three. We talk about the momentum and the excitement. You can kind of feel the energy from one side to the other. Well, it's definitely all on, all on Cal's side right now. And again, they're, good job with this, the kicking game to get them back deeper into their own territory, as opposed to where they've been most of the game, starting towards the 40 or closer to midfield. So, second down at seven. Berkovici. Over the middle, and he completes that pass to D.J. Foster, just the third catch of the night for Foster. 
gets 10 yards. Def defensive coordinator Art, Art Kaufman kind of <laughs> sticking with the same plan. I mean, if it's not if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? I mean, just keep everything in front of you. Don't let them get behind you like they like they did against Arizona last week and we'll get them into the red zone where they can't throw it deep anymore and hopefully force it. She pump fake. And he throws it's nearly intercepted. Well, they're just going to keep him from Like we said, keep it from getting deep behind him and Force them in the corner, and if they get to the red zone, they can't go deep anymore. And you know, like, like they've had four key field goals in a row. Darius White was there on the coverage. He was the one who almost had the interception. He's got three on the season. Second down and ten here for Berkovici and the Sun Devils. Just about five minutes left here in this fourth quarter. Richard pushing that pile up to the 41. A four yard run third and six here for Arizona State Cal's defense is, you know for as much as they've been on the field and I haven't seen the time of possession in a while but you'd think they'd be more tired out by the end of the game they can't seem like they're getting stronger yeah. and stronger they're getting better against the run as the game goes on Cal is coming off the loss last week at Stanford 35 22 in the big game they've come back in this one Trailed by 17 at the half. Third and six. Berkovici steps up and fires. Completes the pass to Raymond Epps for the first down. Another third down conversion. Last week they struggled. Just two for 12 on third down. They still won. But here tonight, much better. 11 for 21. But they haven't been able to put the ball in the end zone. Well, Cal just playing it safe keeping everything in front of them not gonna not gonna get beat on a on a play where they they get caught too aggressive Tim White dancing along the sideline you know the last four drives you know the last drive they, they got down to the six Arizona's offense then the drive before that was the 13 the 16 the four before that so they're it's working they're letting them go down obviously Berkovici down the middle of the field, and it's caught. Lucien again with a big catch. Well, it's been a while since we called his name, about a half of football, but and we talked about playing smart, not allowing the receiver behind the, the defensive backs, but there you see Lucien beat White. Kept by Berkovici, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, but Let's talk about Devin Lucian. Last week, nine catches, 190 yards, a touchdown. Tonight, eight catches, 200 yards, and three touchdowns. Well, there's no secret who they want to throw the ball to. And like I said, I think they found that magic combination last week. And again, I mentioned earlier in the game, this is a guy that graduate transfer UCLA. Todd Graham wasn't sure if he wanted. Berkovici talked him into it, and it's paid off. The last touchdown for ASU came with 8.46 to go in the second quarter. Berkovici comes back to Epps. Epps escapes the tackle. Epps, touchdown! Berkovici able to keep the play alive, able to find Epps, and Epps makes the guy miss and gets in. Well, that's, you show great strength by Berkovici fighting off James Looney, the defensive tackle, but this was a throwback. It was a, it was set up, that play was designed to go that way the entire time. And Cedric Dozier, the corner, sniffed it out. You saw him run up, try to get apps, but missed tackle. And, and we, got a, we got a pretty good ball game here with the two and a half minutes left. The extra point is good, so ASU is now back on top by one. The Sun Devils trying to make it three in a row to close out this regular season. That was the first touchdown of the season for Raymond Epps. Sonny Dykes' crew finally broke. Well, you see Todd Graham talking to his defensive guys. He knows that it's this drive. It's, this is it. 
2.35 to go. Tonight's game is being produced by Jeff Gowan, directed by Mitch Riggin. The associate director is Gilbert Zabeda, the broadcast associate Trevor Hayes, our technical producer is Matt Benedict, and the technical director is Joel Blosser. Stats provided tonight here in the booth by Scott Lightman, down in the truck by Jason Hurd, our spotter making the spot start, James Petrolka. And this is our last game with the crew for the year. And just want to say thank you to everybody. You guys have been awesome. It's been a blast. And what do you know, we've got another great one finishing up here, Pac-12 after dark. Zane Gonzalez will kick off. And Jared Goff and the Cal offense, do they have one more left in them? Gavani Noah. Spins up to the 22. Cal has all three timeouts remaining. Back on October 3rd against Washington State. They were down by 14. They won tonight. They were down by 17 at the half. Well, in the open, we talked about the chess match. The Sonny Dykes chess match against Todd Graham. And, and here's what it comes down to. This is, this is the drive that's going to decide it. So let's see if anybody's kept anything up their sleeve up into this point in the game. Goff, there is a flag. Looks like a free play, and that one was read nicely. And we saw Goff make Arizona State pay for jumping off sides earlier in the game. Offside, defense number one, five-yard penalty, first down. Not, the, not quite the same result here, but positive five yards. And remember, it's a one-point game, and they are going with the win at this point in the game. So don't necessarily need Goff to engineer another touchdown drive. They just need to take time off the clock and kick a field goal. Matt Anderson does have one field goal on the night, 39 yards. That was the opening drive of the game for Cal. Goff just, again, alertly. Doesn't take intentional grounding, doesn't take the sack, but he lives to see another play and also not lose any yards. Well, he also smart enough to know that they got a free play. It was first and five. Defense did a great job of sniffing out the screen. He knew it. They knew it. Throw it away. Don't get intentional grounding. You're second and five. No worse for wear. On second and five. Goff stepping up over the middle. Throws. Steven Anderson took a huge hit by Solomon Means. Means is down. Anderson is down. Wow. Steven Anderson, 6'3, 230. Solomon Means, 6'1, 181. Watch and listen to this. Yeah, I think Means. Got the brunt of that, even though he was the one that laid the lick. It looks like he kind of looking a little woozy there, and that's a shame because. Number seven of the defense, number 89 of the offense, to lead the game for one play. Yeah. Solomon Means, the fifth-year senior, he's a guy that stepped in when when you know their their safety position got depleted over the last couple of weeks. Simon E, their leader. Back there, got injured with an ACL against Washington. Solomon Means came in, stepped in. He played so well, it made Todd Graham go, wait a minute, why didn't I put him in there earlier? How come I didn't know he could play safety? And for him to, to get hurt like that at, at the end, that's a, that's a shame. But good, clean hit. There's two guys playing hard-nosed football out there. Goff, look at him dance around. Goff, staying on his feet, finds the open man. It's his running back, Watson. Excuse me, actually, it's Hanson. What a play by Jared Goff for 17 yards. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what to say here. Aaron Rodgers? It, yeah, Rodgers, Favre. He's, he's using the whole Green Bay connection. I mean, <laughs> yeah. pocket presence, everything in that play. Watson slips through the hole. Across the 35 to the 34, getting into field goal range with 135 to go. Well, in Arizona State, two timeouts remaining. So if you're Todd Graham, you, you kind of see what they're going to do here, and you might want to think about burning them. Second down and three. Kalfani Muhammad is in at tailback. 
A career high in passing yards for Goff, 539 in what could be his final game here at California Memorial Stadium. A loss of one on the carry by Muhammad. Third and four. Time out. California, the first of the half. It'll be 30 seconds in length. So Cal takes the timeout. And let me ask you a question. How conservative do you get right here? Because this is not a chip shot no. of a field goal. No, I mean, I, at this point, you know, it's, you know, if it was 10 yards further, I'd say maybe you run a draw, maybe a, a quarterback draw, something give up the middle to keep the ball in the middle of the field for the, for the kicker. But at this point, even if you... Even if you get almost the first down, you know, you're still a 46, 47-yard field goal. I think you play to get the first down and see what happens. I mean, I, I don't I don't think you run it up the middle. I don't think it's a conservative play. Now, you might want to hit a, a receiver out on the on the flat. I, I think they'd be looking for a screen. Um, you know, maybe a, 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 a slant or a, a wide receiver screen or something on the edge. But um, I think you play for the first down. Like you said, it's, yeah. at this point, it's it's not a chip shot. Third and four. Trey Watson is back in at tailback. The black line is the career long for Matt Anderson. Right by the first down marker. Goff on the slant. Completes the pass to Bryce Triggs. And now they're in field goal range. A 13-yard completion on third and four. Field goal range, and I'm surprised Todd Graham isn't taking a timeout here just to... Watson. Look at him go. Now you got to watch out of getting stripped of the football. Right. Down to the 10-yard line. Now, if I'm Cal, I'm taking my time knowing that you, you really have a chip shot here to win it. And the, the more time you take up, obviously it's the less time Arizona State has to, to try to get down the field. Again, it's Watson. No timeout being called. I don't get that. I don't understand the, the thinking behind that one. You're, you're basically going to want him to kick the field goal, I guess. and. I, think, I guess you're thinking you have a better shot of him missing or us blocking it than, yeah. than giving, putting it in Goff's hands. They're going to take it down, call a timeout, and go for the game-winning field goal. Timeout. California. For second of the half. It'll be 30 seconds in length. Four seconds to go. One-point lead for ASU. Matt Anderson, the kicker for Cal, has connected from 39. Well, we talked about Cal winning eight of the last ten. And <laughs> I'm a, there's there's something about a streak. There's there's streaks. There's you know for a reason. And I know that Todd Graham won the last contest between these two win or these two teams in his first year, but. Cal definitely took the tail of two halves, and Cal definitely played a better second half. Going to be a 26-yard field goal attempt for the win, but first a timeout will be taken by ASU. Timeout. Arizona State, the second and a half. It'll be 30 seconds in length. An attempt to freeze the kicker, Matt Anderson. Anderson, the sophomore from nearby Danville, California. Trying to walk this one off. A 26-yard attempt to finish off what has been a fantastic game.
his first meeting against ASU. Sees his kicker getting carried off the field. Well, I know somewhere, somewhere out there, Ryan Longwell, my former teammate with the Vikings, a longtime NFL kicker, is smiling because kickers don't really ever get any love unless you pull something off like that at the end of a game. Time now for the Dr. Pepper one-of-a-kind play of the game. Jared Goff, we talked about his pocket presence all night long. Look at him dance around. We said, who is it? Is it like Rodgers? You said Rodgers, far. The whole Green Bay connection keeps that play alive, able to find Chad Hansen. And then the game-winning field goal. That is our one-of-a-kind Dr. Pepper plays of the game. A career night for Jared Goff. 542 yards in the air in what could be his final game here at California Memorial Stadium. Threw for five touchdowns. They trailed by 17 at the half. They came back. It was back and forth in the fourth, and they win it 48-46. For Steve Hutchinson and our entire crew this whole season, we will say so long from Berkeley, California. What a way to finish off this one. Jared Goff wants to lead the band. Right now, let's go to Fox Sports Live. Jay and Dan are standing by.